for a bit, and then we'll take some questions and go on as well. Um, so I have Namisa with me, and I also have one of our interns with us today. So um, we'll have them introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Irene. Irene is here, Miss Innocencio, and Miss Kramer. So, um, so if seeing what we're projecting now would be um, like an example of what the expectation is. So I'm going to start from July, and some areas of the tool have been highlighted, and we'll talk about why they've been highlighted as we go on. Okay, so for this first tool, um, you will see um, the place that is called the Section A. So this is a tool that is being used for um, a cohort program, something longitudinal. We know that some of the grantees are doing one and done sessions, and some are doing the continuous sessions where they meet people either weekly or monthly over time for a period of time. So this is an example of a program that is done over time. So the name of this um, particular organization that we're talking about has been named WXYZ. So this are, the section A is actually the simplest part of the tool to be completed. And talks about the reporting period being July 17, um, the focus area being diabetes and obesity, language in which is being tr the information is being conveyed being English, and the date submitted being September. We know this was July that was due in August, but for the first submission, all submissions came in September. We all know um, that was what happened. So that's why we left it as such. So section B is the place that talks about the performance measures. So I'm just going to scroll down to that area and we'll see a few other things there. So. Okay, just a minute, okay. Do we all see the screen clearly? Yes, okay. So, section B is where the performance measures start. And you would see that it says, please fill in only white areas as needed in this section. Do not attempt to unlock any section that is on edit uh, on editable. And that's another important information that we need to convey because there have been times where we've received this tool and some components of it have been unlocked. We do not want it's password protected so that we can get the data that you submit, which is beneficial to both you and us as well. So um, for this particular program, um, like we said, they're doing like a cohort style kind of um, program, which is longitudinal in nature. And the first performance measure for that, okay, and as it's in this, I'm checking. So the first measure is the number, is, that would be in row 15, which talks about the number of courts, of DPP courts. Okay, sorry, just, okay, so the number of DPP courts conducted. And if we go across that row, we would see that the only space that has been left open, if we scroll all the way to the last, um, column, which is T, you would see that the only box that has been left open is where you would enter the number of courts or events. And that's a similar scenario for many other programs. So that is where Hello? So please, um, what we want you to do is to jot down some questions at some particular points. We'll tell you that um, we'll take questions and I'll look at the chat at that time so that we can answer mm -hmm. whatever questions we have. So in that particular box, we'll put in the number of courts and that would have been one. And then going to the second row, which would be um, number of participants. For whatever reason, it's not showing fully in the box, but if you look in this area where the, uh, where the where I'm highlighting where the cursor is, it says number of participants that are recruited to participate in the six DPP courts. Then you would see that this particular, um, this particular program has 
13 as the monthly actual for July. And how did they arrive at the 13? By entering in numbers based on the racial distribution of the individuals in attendance. Because that, you do not have to put the number 13 under the monthly actual. It automatically fills into that because I unlocked this particular um, tool to show this because there's already a formula that has been set that so we'll has that over for you. Here and they will over here. Yeah. And Third this question. accumulates over the month by itself. It's their okay. formula. It's theirs. Yeah, yeah. They've, it's out Could you please all. mute your microphone, please? Thank you. So that would be added up across all the grantees, totaling those numbers from there. So it would total from where it starts from um, American um, or Blacks, African Americans is what that box says, or Blacks. It would total from there all the way to unknown. Because we know that when you do some large events, we're trying to move away from um, large events that we cannot ascertain that has an impact on life. But we know that you go for such events, and at those events, you might not be able to capture like, what the race or ethnicity of those individuals are. And that's why we have that particular box or that column where you could capture the unknown race or ethnicity. And then that would total up into your row 16, column B, which is where I'm currently highlighting. Those, those numbers would total in there. Oh, okay. So that's how that particular row adds up. And then I would move to another tool to explain something. Okay, well, so that is row 16. So if we move further down to the row 17, that moves into another kind of performance measure. It talks about the number of outreach activities conducted on pre-diabetes education. So this is where the category of people that do challenges, people that do things in schools and everything. Okay, and I see that we have a question. So, Jamie, could you ask your question, please? So, my question is with that row 15, if you continue to scroll, scroll across on that data tool and it goes into the age, <clears throat> the age bracket, uh -huh. are those filled out there as well? For row 16, right? If, uh, Where it says the number of participants, right? Yeah. Okay, so those ones, we would like to capture that information, and mm -hmm. those ones total down the column. Those okay. numbers add down the column, so we can retrieve those when, we, when we're finally making a summary data for you at the end of the year. So those ones, because those ones, if, if you add the age group to the race or ethnic distribution, it's going to be you duplicating that count, because it's the same people that have the age distribution as well. So that doesn't add up that way. Is mm -hmm. that clear? Yes. Okay, so that we're able to capture that in another way by getting totals down those columns. And when it's duplicated, we know how to tease out those numbers as well. So okay. that is fine that way. So that would be the age distribution of those individuals that were in attendance at that event. But they do not add up into the monthly actual because doing that would duplicate those numbers. But it is, so in the columns, you know how to get rid of the duplicated because it would happen the same in the columns. We know how to get rid of the duplicated okay. because if it's people that, if you had counted along the lines of referrals and it was the same set of people, then we know how to take out those numbers as well. Okay. Or if the same set of people in the same spectrum of performance measures were counted twice because of another performance measure, we can take those numbers out. Thank you. Okay, to get um, individual specific numbers. Thank you. And that was great. So we can take questions the way Jamie just did, just by waving um, sh um, a show of a hand. Um, thank you. So going on would be um, row 17, which is where we were, um, number of outreach activities conducted. And if we scroll all the way as well, I know this tool has a lot of scrolling, but Compared to last year, what we were trying to do was to find something that was simpler to utilize and that would not require you to do a drop down on every single individual that comes into the room, that comes into any event that you do. So in order to capture all the information we need is, why, is the reason why you have to do this continuous scrolling. But understanding it will make you realize that it's actually easy to go through this process. So if you look in row 17 as well, um, the only box that is left open, because this is counting like the number of events or the number of workshops or things like that, the only box that is left open there is also the row 17, 
Colombi, where I'm currently, where I currently have the CASA, where you would count how many of such events that you had that month, depending on what that performance identifies. It would capture those numbers. And if you scroll all the way, you would see that there is nothing else expected along that particular row. So going on to row um, 18, which talks about the number of participants. So it's a similar thing. What we're trying to do is you're counting the workshops, you're counting the people that are in attendance, and then you're, counting the, you're documenting the impact of what you have accomplished with those people. Because like we know, the state, the way the state is moving is we want some outcome measures. So yes, I'm doing a diabetes training. I'm doing, okay, Ms. Umo has a question, so I'll just take that real quick. Um, and that was a chat. Um, Ms. Umo wants us to go back to 17. There is a rule that says referrals is open to fill in. Okay, so I'll go back and see that. Thank you for um, that, Ms. Umo. You're welcome. Um, so, and that is very possible. So in 17, number of outreach. So I'll go all the way and see what that is. Okay, there is actually nothing open. What is open is in row 18. If you see what I just did, row 17 is the place that captures the activities because this is like the workshop. These are like the event numbers. But when you talk about people, because we are not referring workshops, we're not referring events, we're not referring outreach activities, we're only referring the people that were in attendance. So when we get to the performance measure that is related to the people or a person count, then that box will be open. Is that clear? Um, yes. Yeah. Okay, so okay. Rule 17 talks about number of outreach activities, which for some people will be number of challenges, which for some people will be number of workshops. For some other people, it might be number of one and done cardiovascular sessions or whatever it might be. But these are like the sessions or the workshops or things of that sort. This is not a people count. This is an event in whatever capacity counts. So you're not counting referrals from that. But when we go down to row 18 and we scroll all the way back to look at the performance measure, the performance measure says number of participants reached through outreach activities. So initially we had documented number of events or number of outreach activities. So now we're counting the people. And if you go across, like I'm scrolling all the way to the right, the number 28 and the monthly actual in this came up as a result of documenting that there were 28 African Americans in attendance in that particular event, meaning maybe it was a workshop or an outreach event that was conducted for African Americans and there was no other racial or ethnic distribution in attendance. And if you want, you can put the zeros, and if you do not want, it doesn't change anything. Either you put the zero or not, whatever number is reflected will be what is captured. So if you go all the way to the right, you will see that no other racial or ethnic categories were captured in this particular row which is why there was a 28. And then, um, well, the okay, that's the question. Just, they're all wrong. Uh, Bochi, this is Elizabeth, can you hear me? Yes. So your number 18, you really should not, the label itself has some, you know, challenge. Outreach activities of pre-diabetic education. You might want to say persons because it is misleading because you've put down activities or education, you didn't say persons, okay, so you're so really asking for persons. I'm just trying to point out to you that we read it, we interpret that. I will not interpret as the numbers of people. You're asking me, you know, on the 18th, it's the activities. You okay, thank you for from? that. Thank you for that. But if you would look at that performance measure, which is currently being highlighted, it's the number of participants. And when you're counting participants, that's a person count. They're just defining the group of participants as compared to the core diabetic session. Because this particular program has another type of program that they do with the same motor funds. So to be able to differentiate, that's why it's been named as a number of participants reached through outreach activities. There's another group that is a number of participants reached through the um, DPP program. So when we see the number of participants, it's the same thing. We could have changed the word and changed it to individuals or persons or whatever we may. But this is a people count. But we're just trying to say that this people count is people that are reached through all my other outreach activities 
as compared to my one and done, as compared to my structured child programs, as compared to my DPP cohort program. This is a different category of people. Is that clear? Ms. Chung? That's Ms. fine. Chung, I'm that just saying, yeah, I, I, that's fine. I'm just, okay. you know, just giving you feedback. If I read that 18, you know, that's, if it is, of yeah, course, and you know, we have not to someone that. else's program. You know, it's someone else's program, but I will not call it activities. I will not call it education. I will put it the numbers of participants. But I just want to make sure that, yeah. So whoever the program is, they put down the correct label. But when yeah, I read so it from here, it's not the program. This might be different. But for you, for example, because you do the baby showers, like you have on your performance measure, would have been number of participants maybe read through the baby showers. So, but for these people, their performance measure is about outreach activities. But depending on what your performance measure in terms of if it's a workshop, in terms of if it's a chala, if it's whatever it is, would determine how this is structured. So this is based on this particular program's um, activities. Okay? But thank you for the feedback. So um, going all the way across that row, so because this is a people count row, if we go across, um, well, this isn't there because this particular individual didn't have their racial distribution or something. Um, so that breakdown, um, oh, well, yes, they did. They were African Americans. Um, but what they didn't document was the age category of these people, and that could have been because they didn't have it. would rather have blank boxes than um, numbers that were created, and the sex distribution wasn't documented as well. So when we see things like this, we might be reaching out to you and just asking you just to clarify that this wasn't an omission, and this was because you really did not get that information. If you had told us that in your narrative, then we would already know that. But if we're not sure, in the monthly response letter, you might be getting a point that says um, we haven't seen any racial distribution for these 28 African Americans or their sex distribution, and all you have to respond is, I do not know it, they did not tell me what it was, and that would have been fine. Or if you do know it, it would have been an omission, and then you'd go back and make a correction in the tool. And then all the way, I'm leaving this column because I'll talk about it when we finish going through the other performance measures on this page. We need to really talk about this, which is why I have highlighted that particular column, which is column T, as you see up. Um, but then there's a box open there because this is a people count row. But if you go up, because that's uh, an activity or event or workshop or a court count row, that would not be reflective. So going on to row 19, and if you have any questions, you could send a chat, you could wave your hand, you could stop us and we'll do that. We'll talk to you about it. So going on, another performance measure, this particular grantee runs the CDC module of um, the DPP program. So this measure, and so they structure their performance measures to reflect what the CDC expectation is. So this talks about the number of participants who lose 2% of their weight upon completion of six months. So this is July, right? And this is upon completion of six months. So when I go to this row and I don't see anything, I am glad because there should be nothing there. There should be nothing there till we hit the six month mark. And after the six months, so that will take you to media of the grant before you can talk about this. But of course, you're tracking the weight so that you can be able to say that 2% of people, um, 2%, um, that this number of person lost 2% of their body weight at that particular point in time. So that needs to be tracked. And I'll share with you another tool that tracks that as well. So that sorts that rule, which is why we do not have anything. We do not expect to see anything there, and that is fine. Going on to the next row, which is row 30, it talks about another measure that talks about number of participants who improved their goal of 150 minutes of brisk walk. And this also is at the point of six months completion. So they're documenting this so that they have the data to report when they hit the six month mark, which would have been July, August, September, October, November, or thereabouts. They would have had that um, documentation by then. So then when I see, um, And we're in July, and there's a number. So hold on, let me see. January. So, um, sorry, I'm trying to see something. Okay. 
we're right here just trying to make sure I'm projecting this thing the way we can all see it, and that's too small. So, okay, so that was row. Okay, so that was row 21, and there is no number. Okay, that wasn't 21. That was row 20, and there is a number. Okay, well, so if you would look at this, um, the performance measure in row 19 says upon completion of six months. So that we do not get till the end of six months. The next performance measure says first six months. That says within the first six months. So they are capturing this every month. How many individuals complete 150 minutes? Because this is not after the six month mark. This is after, this is um, every month they come in. People that have completed 150 minutes every week will be counted. And these are duplicate accounts across months and we are aware about this. So going on to the next performance measure, it talks about uh, number of participants who improve their goals, similar to the last one, but this is for months seven to 12, and this is based on what they, the performance, how their performance measures were written, how they signed upon it in their conditions of award. So this would just be next seven to 12 months. So we're not expecting to see any numbers there, and we have not seen any numbers there at this point in time. So that is just the expectation as well. So going on to row 22, and um, row 22 talks about um, increased knowledge of nutrition as measured by people that complete a particular number of sessions. And how do we get to know this if we're not capturing information on people that have been coming month in, month out? Yes, one of the things that we have requested from you is to submit your sign-in sheet but also if there is a way that you track attendance. If you're doing a longitudinal study, there has to be a way that you track attendance. If the expectation is that you haven't qualified for passing this unless you've attended four or six, of it, for example, if you haven't been tracking, how do you come to that, um, how do you get to that point of saying, yeah, five people accomplished this or two people accomplished or whatever that number might be. So there's a, the, it's important that for longitudinal um, programs, this has to be tracked. So this talks about something about the measure of attendance, the number of attendance, and everything like that. And the number that the monthly actual for this also comes from um, the racial distribution. And like we said, this is like this is one of the numbers that we would take out because these are likely duplicated numbers. These are the same people that have been talked about in a previous performance measure. So at the end of the year, when we get the totals, we know which rows of performance measure to take from the overall numbers that will give us like the unduplicated counts that we can report about. And we can also talk about the duplicated counts. Because I know that we've talked about the fact that if you have five people and you follow five people for 12 months, is different from having just five people because the amount of work that you have put into those five people over a period of time is highly significant and you should get credit for such work, which is why we want to help you to capture that information so that when we're reporting about the work that you do, we can clearly state to them that yes, you might have had 120 participants, yes, you, yes, you might have had 80 participants, but these 80 people, out of them, 40 people came 10 times or whatever people came 10 times. So that gives you credit for the amount, the work you have done, because we know that you guys are doing a great lot in the different counties where you are. So um, after that performance measure, we would come to um, the referrals. And having gotten to the referrals, I would like to go across to the column that we talked about, where um, having talked to several people at different times, we have tried to explain this, but I'm not sure that this. I have a feeling that one-on-one -on -one we have communicated this information, but as a group, I'm not sure we have come to this consensus about this information, which is about column T, um, where it talks about referrals. For as many people as we have talked to recently, we have stressed to them that this column is doing a people count. We know that at the beginning of this, we're trying to do a referral count, in this column, but many people had come to us and they had given us some good ideas and some good feedback, which was after the three months 
testing period before the entire tool was created, which is different for all fixing grantees. So you can understand, and each is locked, each page is locked. So you can understand why it's almost impossible for us to go back and reward this. But we've been trying to communicate this, that what we're trying to count on the referrals here is a people count. Like, for example, I did in row 18, for example, it talks about a um, number of participants at outreach events, right? So if I go across and I say maybe 28 people came for this event, out of the 28 people, I referred seven people. Seven would be the number there for that particular event. Those seven people might have received 21 different referrals with one person getting 10, I hope not, another person getting three, another person getting two, some of them might have gotten one, some might have gotten more than the other. But what we're capturing here is the people count. And at the end of this webinar, we could send off like a write-up that would restate that, more like a cheat sheet, I could add it to the end of your tool or something. Because going back to edit this, at this point, we would want you to bear with us, it's almost impossible. But that column is for a people count. So when you go and you see a box, and you've had an event and you've had a number of people there, so on your signing or your marking register, you have 20 people, and while talking with them or something, you found out that seven of them needed referral, that number goes in here, right there, depending on what particular event that is. And then, so if that happened, and in row 16, for example, it also talks about the number of participants recruited to participate in the DPP. So in that DPP class, or for this month, in the DPP classes you've had, um, you've had this whatever number of people. And then this would be a people count of people that you referred. Because when people come for your DPP, they might need all the services, right? They're in the DPP, but they don't have a primary care doctor. They don't have ins health insurance. They need weak services. They need whatever it might be. That would be the place where you count the number of people, right there where highlighting. At this point, I'd like to take any questions before we go on. Are there any questions? Any questions at this point? No? Oh, I do, I do. This is Elizabeth. Okay. So let me ask a general question. You have yes. a referral column on, referral column on T. Am I hearing you saying that regardless what activities it is on column A, whether this is a class, whether this is outreach, whatever that is, then if we saw or we have given referral regardless, then you put the numbers at the end of that particular yeah. activity? Yes, yeah. and I know where that is confusing, and I'm not sure if that's the scenario with ACF because some other people have performance measures, and I, I, I'm sure I'm going to hear like hey, a lot of people say, yeah. Some other people have performance measures that state the number of referrals. And I know I've communicated this with your staff, Ms. Chung. For people that have, not everybody has a performance measure that captures, this particular program has a performance measure that captures number of referrals. What we do not want to do is to duplicate counts of those people. So if you choose in the row that talks about the number of referrals, you could put all your total referrals for the month in terms of people count in that space, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. But if you'd rather, if you've entered it here, then you do not need to duplicate it down as well, and I'll show you an example of what I mean by that. So if I would go down to this particular, and I know this is a bit confusing, but I also want us to acknowledge the fact that this is a new tool, we were trying to work through it together. We were gradually, prob um, problems that we did not envisage at the time of creation have gradually come upon us and we've just found a way to resolve it without totally throwing out the work that has been done already. Going into the future years, um, the understanding that we've gained from this year should make us have something better than this. But yes, that is a floor. That is something that we discovered along the line and we, we appreciate your understanding regarding this. But it's just something that came by as we kept using the tool, as you kept giving us feedback. So if we would go to, and just to answer your question again, Ms. Chang. 
So I know your worry is that some, of, some grantees, their performance measures have something to do with referral counts. For example, this particular program. So there is a performance measure, as it is with some of the other programs, that talks about the number of participants who are referred to support services. Examples are things like transportation, primary care, social services, physician, whatever it might be. And they have a performance measure where they capture numbers here. So if you capture those numbers here, if you capture those numbers where I'm highlighting by doing like the racial distribution, that is fine to have those numbers. For, for people that have this performance measure, let's be clear, you have to enter these details. But these details will not fill into your row, into your column T. And we'll see that as we go on, because I'm sure they have some numbers here, maybe in the subsequent months, I'll show that to you. So it's zero here. If they add some racial or ethnic distributions, those numbers will be added and filled into here. And that would have been totaling towards their annual target. So if this grantee chooses to fill in all referrals into here, no matter where they're generated from, be it from the outreach program, be it from um, the court program, they could, after filling this in here, they could scroll all the way to this box where is um, Row 23, the same row where you had entered your referral by racial distribution and the column T and put in those number of referrals. So if you do this, then you do not need to put it under the individual categories we had shown before because you are totaling everybody for the month in here. For people that have this performance measure, not everybody, like I said, has this performance measure, but because you don't have that performance measure, even if you're doing referrals, you still need to capture that. So if you would scroll up, it's either they enter it where I just showed or uh, they come in here from the cohort. Okay, I do this cohort this month, I do this three cohorts this month, all these activities, and I had five referrals from all of them. I put five there. I did all these actu uh, outreach activities this month and I had two referrals from all of them, I put two here, and then it would total there. So for example, if they had put two here and put five here, if I would scroll down all the way down, it would show me that this month, and why is that showing me too? Uh, let's go back. So, okay. So I'd put two under the court, and I'd put five under the outreach activities. If I scroll down, it would total for me at seven. So if I go here and I put in another seven, because those are the same people, and I come this way, it would give me 14, telling me that there were 14, 14 people referred. So for people that have this type of performance measure, it would be great to either, after doing the racial distribution and getting an account towards your yearly performance, come here and put that number, or put the numbers just in those other two categories. Is that clear, or that has generated even more questions? Okay, okay this is Elizabeth again. Yeah. So the, the referral that you're asking, these are referrals. These are not patients. So in other words, that on you put down the two on this particular teaching, EPP class, that's two. Then you have another one that's five, which is education. So this is the numbers of people or the numbers of referrals? The numbers of people. So in other words, you, the, num the two well, referrals, that, let me just say this, the two yeah. referrals on number 16, if they come from the same page, same clients or two different clients? Two different clients. We're going to go okay. to section C where it talks about the referrals and all those other things. This okay. is the people count. And this wasn't the initial consensus. And as, much, as many opportunities as we've had, we've tried to communicate this, that this changed along the line based on the feedback that we got because people were getting conflicting numbers based on that. So we decided to streamline this to a people count, but then the wording in that I agree, there's something wrong with that wording because that was the initial plan to count the referrals. But then we've communicated that we're no longer counting referrals in this column, we're counting the people referred. And we don't want to count the people referred in two scenarios. Okay, and I, and I want to, okay, let me also ask because I, 
please forgive me because I'm not as granular every month with my with my program. Okay. So you have access to do the people's count. I got that. But okay. I was told that later on you also ask demographic information about the people that got referral. Is that correct? Yes. Who said yes? I, I, no, I don't, I'm just asking you to okay. clarify for me. Are you also later on in some place in the report, you're also expecting us to give your demographic data for the people who got referral? So yes? if you, oh, no. and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer that because that is, so if you're entering it in here, because you've told us the demographics of people in this, in attendance in this court, there is no way by which you could reflect those people, except you tell us in the narrative, there's no way you can reflect their racial or ethnic distribution because for the entire group, you had captured that information. But assuming you come down to a measure that talks about referrals, this is all about referrals. So if you're planning to put your numbers here, then yes, we can know all that information because that is the same number. This is just counting this particular performance measure is counting only referrals. So when we see, you're already doing the racial distribution for you to be able to get the numbers. So we get that anyway. Yeah. Is that clear? I'm so, not too sure, but I'll have Philip to help me out. But Okay, Philip is with you. I know that while we're on the referral, I don't mean to take a lot of time, but that's where I think I heard about a lot of confusion on my folks, that you want to have the demographic data of the people who got referrals you also want to know the, the the referral that was ultimately made. If I refer people to transportation, we'll get to you, also, let me, let me finish. you also okay. want to know that you know when that transportation referral is actually done. Is that correct? So you want to know when we make the referral. You want to know the demographic of those re, those people whom we make referral, and later on you want to know when the referral was actually done. Or to take it in place, yes? Yes, so we the, referral is making, the referral is making July. And we have no way of knowing. I mean, we we'll give them the referral, it might take them two months, six weeks. So finally, so, get to the, to the consultation. Let me ask you this. So, are you expecting us also to provide your information when that referral is actually made, well, actually, you know, when the patient or the client actually gone to the yes. So you want that information, according yes, to Philip, right? Yes, we do. And, 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 and then you also want, let me just finish, you also want the demographic of that particular referral? Can I respond now? Yes, please. Okay. So when, when you do the linkage, we do not, we know you might have it, but we do not need, like, their racial or ethnic distribution. But at the point of doing the referral, which will be something similar to row 23 that talks about referral in terms of people who are referred to support services, we would get that information. If you add another performance measure that talks about the fact that after you've conducted follow-up on participants who have been referred to support services, um, the number of people that you you have, that have, you have established a linkage to the service for is what this particular performance measure is talking about. It's saying conducting follow-up on participants who have been referred to support services. So yes, two months ago I referred you for health insurance. It's not like automatic, so maybe I'm calling you up two weeks after and it's already in the next month, or I'm calling you a month after. The point where you establish yeah, right linkage... And your team knows this. If Philip is on the line, he knows this. And Alison, we've had several conversations about this as well. She knows this. So at that point when um, at that point when the individual, when you call the individual and you establish that the individual has accessed the service, has gotten the service, that is when you capture the numbers here. And for you to be able to capture this number, you would have to do the ratio distribution for it to fill into this number. But these are for people, so for you it might be something saying number of people referred, number of people linked to service. It's documented differently for different um, programs and organizations. For some people it's conduct follow-up, and after you've conducted follow-up, they have established a linkage, you count those numbers 
along this row. For some people, it's just stated as number of participants linked to service after follow-up is captured in here. And for that, you would have the racial distribution. And like I said, for individuals or for programs that have this type of performance measures for row 23 and row 24, yes, we would get the racial or ethnic distribution of those people because without getting those numbers, we cannot get your monthly actual. But for, for, for people that go and fill in their referrals, like in row 18, for example, that talks about number of people that participate in the court and then go on to fill in their referrals, in this particular location. For them, they do not have to do a separate racial or ethnic distribution for that. Because for the entire group, we have the racial and ethnic distribution, but there's no way we're capturing this other information. Except you tell us on the narrative. Is that clear? No? Ms. Chung? Yeah, that, that's fine. That's fine. Sorry. I'm, and we could talk more that. about this. We could yes. definitely talk more about this. Are there any other questions? Hello. Hi. <coughs> Hello. Because we'll be going into section C, but are there any other questions before we continue? No? No. Okay, thank you. So then we'll go on to section C, which I think, like you see, if I'm scrolling now, the way the tool is at times is possible to miss out section C. But if you would scroll again to the left, so if I go this way, there is something called section C that some people have not been feeling at all, and we've been trying to reach out to them with regards to it because it's important that everybody completes the section. Uh, section C will tell you same rules, do not edit, uh, fill only wide areas and things like that. So when you get to section C, and I've highlighted all this, so section C, and if I would scroll up a little bit, it would tell you that section C is all about referrals. If I scroll down a little more, it would seem as if it aligns with monthly actual or year-to-day actual, but if only you would go up a little bit and see that this section C, there's a yellow block that separates those sections, and section C is about referrals. And what you would see next in row 30 is where it talks about the types, number of individuals referred, number of individuals linked to services. So this is really not what we're trying to capture here. Like I said, this section alongside the column T changed as we were, together, were working together on this tool. So section C captures referral numbers, which is what Ms. Um, Chung was talking about. So I had two people that I referred, but all two of them got eight referrals. It might have been that one of the two got one referral and one person needed a lot of services and got six referrals. This is where I capture that information. So now you're already telling us a story. I have seven people that I referred this month, both for my cohort program, my outreach program, my challenge, my workshops, my one and done cardiovascular session, whatever, my baby showers, whatever I have done. I have seven people referred in section B. When I get to section C, I would come down here and say, you know the types of referrals that you did. I did a referral to social services. I'll put that. I could just, just for now, I'll put social services. I did a referral to um, whatever else. And then I'll call it DDDDD. I did a referral to that. And then I'll come here, and I already have that information right there in my office, right? I had seven people referred, but Mr. A got a referral to social services and DDDDD. Mr. B got the referral to social services, and that was all for Mr. B. So already I know that if I write social services for this person, for my people, I have maybe two of that, and for DDDDD, I have one of that. So this is you splitting down at a referral level. 
Just to restate, section B, you counter the people. Amongst the seven people, they add, I don't know, maybe 20 referrals. You would know that because this person came to me and this person needed referrals to WIC, referrals to some SSDI, referrals to SNAP, referrals to whatever. I know those numbers. So across all seven people, I want to find out how many of those are weak, how many of those are SSDI, how many of those are SNAP. And I know what I'd already told another grantee was, we want to be able to capture categories of, um, categories of um, referral types as much as possible. If something belongs in the same category, like you could, social services is a broad group that could capture a lot of things. So you might just go into social services, and I'm not vast in this, I'm just gonna put the things that I think are social services, and I just go in there and put transportation, you know, and things like that. You wanna capture things, you wanna be able to capture things as much as possible, and of course, feedback from you, we've worked with a grantee to streamline at some point, but feedback from you in what 10, paramount categories you think we should capture that could like capture some subgroups so that we're not just like listing things that do the same thing as referrals and then we have a difficult to control list of referrals. For things that can be summarized, we want to summarize them as much as possible and then in parentheses we can tell, tell out what are the things that filled into that group. So like I said, in this group, in the first column, you're counting the number of referrals. So for SSD, SF, for social services, I add 10 referrals, for example, and I'm changing that to 10. So among my 10 people, okay, you cannot even have more than seven because I'm sorry about that. So let's say I add seven referrals because you cannot have more than the number of people in terms of referrals, right? If there are seven people, you cannot have for a particular type of referral, you can have more than seven. So let's say also seven of them got some form of SSDI services. I go down. And for the DDD services, two of them got that. I had two referrals for that. Two of those people got it. And then there's another type of referral that's called why, 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 why something. And then there were another five people in this category. So when you go down, you would see. So Jamie, you asked the question that since you have broad categories, um, could you have like seven? Sure, and in a previous conversation, if I remember with Alison and Philip, we had talked about those, and they do have some of that information. I think Philip's on the line, Alison says she might not be on this line, but yes, we had communicated that information to them at one of our meetings. Okay? Yeah, but so you just okay. said you have more than seven, but like if it was a social service um, mm -hmm. thing, they got referred to SNAP and WIC. Mm -hmm. Have eight in that category. Can you have eight in that category? Yes. Since it, you since see, this is category? developing by reason of this communication. I get what you mean. Uh -huh. So on the social services, different types of services, so you could have more numbers. I agree with you, and I didn't okay. think about that. So thank you. So if we're if we're for people that are writing, if you're doing the week snap as separate things, then you cannot have more than seven people, more than seven referrals. But if, as I'm suggesting, if we're having an SSI group that will capture week and snap and everything, you could have more than that because seven people, one of those seven people might have got, gotten two or three social services. So yes, you are right. So I take that back and please everybody take that as a correction. So that could happen. Okay? I apologize about that, but that could totally happen. So... Anybody else have a question based on that? Hello, is there a question? No? Okay. So based on what uh, um, Jamie just talked about, that is a possibility. If we're not splitting those types of referrals as WIG, SNAP, and all those things that come from social services, then we might have more than the actual number of people in one category because more people could have gotten more than that service. And if, if I see string numbers, at some point I would call you and say, all you have to say is this is what happened and then I would not, but I just want to make sure that we're on the same page about this. So even when we're calling you at times, it's just so that we could clarify about this. It's nothing um, 
It's nothing to judgment. It's nothing to make anybody uneasy about. So if I see strange numbers that sound strange to me at the time when I am reviewing this, I would possibly call and say, I see this strange number. Could you explain what exactly is going on? And if you tell me what, and I probably wouldn't even call you about that going forward because I would have gotten a plural and just made sure that we're on the same page regarding this. So that's how, how this particular column will fill all the way down. And um, so I just want to show you something. Okay, and it's still showing seven. Okay, ideally for some people there will be like a negative mark here or some positive number here or something. Do not bother about this. There were formulas that were put in here at the time when the tool was created before we redefined de the roles of these various columns. So do not bother about that. At the point when we're analyzing at the end of the fiscal year and we go back, we know what to do when all those sheets are unlocked and we want to do like a final review. That will be taken care of. So if in this section you see something that says negative two or something, or says positive something somewhere, do not bother about it. Just if you're sure that you've entered the data as expected. So going up, the next column over talks about the number of individuals linked to service. And like we said, number of individuals is a measure that is captured in section B. So in this section, number of individuals linked to services is the number of referrals completed. That's all that is. So like we said, both of these columns highlighted in this very dark red or whatever color that is, these are not a people count. These are referral counts. So this column over where I'm highlighting, this is the number of referrals conducted or whatever word you want to use to define that, but these count the referrals. The number over is number of referrals completed. So you had in July, you had seven referrals to SSI, for example. Maybe that month you had found out that two of those referrals were completed. For example, two might have been completed, none might have been completed, depending on the scenario. You might not have placed the calls to them. You, they might not have reached out to you to say they've gotten it. So you really, if you don't know, then that's a zero. If you know, then you put it there. But the expectation is that we're trying to see that in the subsequent months, these seven people that were carried over, there's some form of linkage or something that says that they dropped out or you couldn't reach them. Because there are times that you try to follow up people and they do not will to, uh, they're not willing to be followed up or they've changed numbers or you just cannot locate them. There is nothing you can do in such scenarios. So all you have to tell us is that, well, I tried to follow up and then I got nothing out of this. And that is absolutely fine. But for the people that you can reach out to, this is where you enter the number of referrals completed. Like you could put two right there for the SSI category. When you get to the DDD, the category that we named as a referral of DDD, you could put in zero if you've had nobody. If you go on down, you could put in one if you've had any. Just looking at this, you see that there, there are um, five plus two plus four more referrals that you haven't accounted for in the month of July. That carries over into August or September, depending on when it's established. So you have some carryover numbers. And what that means is if I click into August, is there a question? No. So please, you could stop me at any point. And like we just discovered, there are things that are being noted that we're just seeing as well. Um, so if I go into August, for example, and I'm trying to make this, uh, so, so now we're in August, and then go to Section C. So, okay. So in sec and I'll go back up later, but it's the same thing from month to month for Section A and B. Just make sure that the date is corrected. Your organization name is always your organization name. Your reporting period is corrected for the current month, and the date submitted is corrected. That's all you need to do for Section B, uh, for Section A rather. Section B, you would just fill in things just the way you did in the previous month. So if I go up, and what happens is the year-to-date starts adding up right from August. 
based on how many people you had in July. So the number of people that you get from here in August will add up to the preceding month because there are some formulas that have been put in here. So it would add up. This is your monthly actual and is an addition of all this other. When you get to your year today, actually adds what you add from the previous month to what you have in the current month and it gives you a number. So every month when you're looking at your tool, you can look at this and compare this to that. And that will be what we're also seeing. And we're saying, mm, they're on track, they're not on track. Okay, if we're mid-year, at least they should be like 60 in, or depending on your program, if your program says by December something, you should have done something. We're looking at this in December and we're saying if you have attained it or not. If it says by January, you should have attained this. If you haven't, we're seeing all that as time goes on. So this is where you can also track that as well as we do. So that even before you get a letter, from the office stating something, or if you get a phone call, you already know what is happening and you know how to double up your efforts in whatever categories. So like we see for this particular program, there was one quarter of DPP in the previous month. This month they added another one that it totaled up to two. And that goes on to section B is the same across, going down. And then section C, we come back to section C. So in section C, and the reason why that section was highlighted is because for this particular program, um, if you would look at their performance measure that talks about referrals, and this was August still when we were trying to figure out things. So if you look at the performance measures related to this, it talks about the number of referrals. So we already know that they had people referred. And then when we get to section C, we don't get told anything about the kind of referrals, which is why that is highlighted. And we're asking that question of, so what happened? You had two or three people referred. Why are we not seeing the type of referrals in this section? So in this section, they are two, as you can see here. Hopefully those are the people count, so those are two people. But for these two people, were there 10 referrals, were there whatever linkage to service? And in this particular one, for example, if in this month you did not have any referral to social services, so you have social services, for example, and you didn't have any referrals, so you could put zero here. And if in that month you have so from last one, you have five other people that you hadn't reached out to, that you hadn't linked to service. You could put those people here if at that point you have established three or something. So there are months where you would have a referral that you haven't conducted that month, but you would still document because you want to put in the number of referrals, people, uh, referrals that were accessed or the linkages that were established. Is that clear? So what we're saying is there would be months when a particular, a particular referral will be documented in section C, and the number of referrals for that particular referral will be zero because none of such referrals was done in that month. And the only reason why you have entered it in section C is because you want to document the follow-up that you had done from the previous month. And you want to say that three out of the remaining people were actually linked to service. If none of them were linked to service and you did not do any referrals for that, that month, then you do not document it. But if we at some point see some discrepancy, which will not be every time, but when we see it, we'll be reaching out to you and asking you that, okay, so what happened to these people from this time? And it's either you lost them to follow up or whatever the uh, reason might be. So that would be section C. I would like to ask if there are any questions at this point before we move on regarding the column T that we talked about and the redefining of what the expectation is where I'm currently highlighting, which is in section B, right there, and also section C, where it talks about the referral count, which is different from what the expectation was at the beginning, and we've been trying to communicate this. And I could say like a summary of this again, just as a point of going back to for everyone. But we cannot go back and change those wordings. But we could add an addendum to that that would make you realize that section C counts the referrals, and it could be more than the number of people referred, knowing fully well that some individuals get more referrals than some others. Some might just get one, some might get more than that. I want to be able to capture that. So that when we're telling your story, a story could go like, yeah, they had six cohorts, they reached 180 people. This 180 people came 2,000 times. And, um, 30 of them lost 2% of their weight. And amongst their courts or amongst all their programs for the year, they, did, they had 20 people referred. Amongst the 20 people, there were 200 referrals. And after the 200 referrals, um, 150 linkages were done. 
That is a good story. That's just, I just put in random numbers. But that's the way we want to be able to tell your story. And there's a way we can summarize the story across all grantees. But for you as a person, when they're talking about you, we want to be able to tell your story in that way. So that is why we're trying to capture this information this way. And if that is clear, I would like to move on to another thing. Is that clear? Are there any questions? Okay, so it seems there are no questions. Because um, uh, what Namisa just brought to my notice is that we've been getting some calls or emails regarding some questions. If you'd like to address them now, we'd like to talk about it now. But if you want us to do it like one-on-one -on -one later, I'll type this, then we're available for that as well. But if you want to ask that question, now is a good time. Because it might be beneficial to every other person as well. So, okay, so if there are no questions, and of course questions could come up later. Um, I would like to, okay. Let me, let me ask a quick question. Does everybody understand so far what Dr. Alungi is explaining in terms of the different sections? <laughs> Hello? So I understand the sections. I just, um, I had one question, and I know, like, it's too, back to, like, too late to go back and change things, but I'm just wondering... What, one of the things that makes the data tool really hard to use, like we actually print it out every month, yeah. is that section A is fixed and you can't scroll past it. Mm -hmm. So when, like we just saw, it makes the windows really little. Um, in the future, could you opt not to, so that you can actually scroll past that? Um, <laughs> open to suggestions if there's um, anybody that has this expertise, I'm open to listen to it. At the point when we created it, I wanted everybody, well, I know, I don't like the way it folds into, one, into, into each um, page. I don't like the way the pages fold over as well. Mm -hmm. But at that point, we thought that was the simplest thing to do. But if you have any ideas, I'm open to that. We could talk about that outside this. Okay. You know, you. yeah, if there's something that can make it better, any well, suggestions that you have that can make it better, we're open to listen, and we could talk about it. Well, we... I think, Jamie, if you have an idea, it would be good to share it here because we are now on the webinar, and this is for everybody to have some of a uni some something of a uniformed understanding, mm -hmm. yes, of the data tool. So I really don't think that you know we should hold this idea and sort of discuss it outside of here. We may discuss your performance measures in terms of your data input in your data tool. But if you have a question like that for me, it's pertinent. And I think if you have an idea, you can share it with everybody that is on this line so they understand. They may, you know, have the same issue. They may go back into, you know, when they go back into their offices and try to probably look at it and say, oh, now I understand what, you know, that caller was asking about. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you should really be open to sharing uh, with us if you have any ideas, please. Do you need to think about it? My only suggestion is, like, because it's not really useful to us to see our name and the date <laughs> and not be able to see those other, like, row 18, 19, and 20 at the same time. So it's just, like, as far as viewing it, just makes it difficult. Yeah, but when we want to... Because the way you also print, we also print and attach your narrative. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. nobody knows when they come to do, what do they do? Uh, when they come to check out your... The auditing. The auditing. Mm -hmm. So we have to have everything in order. The reason why that section A is there is so that like, I know when ABC is different from AACF mm -hmm. and every other person like that. And okay. when we're reviewing so that we know what month we're in, is why that section is. But if we could make it smaller so that we can have more space for B and C, we would do that. Well, thank you for hearing my suggestion. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. I'm always open. You have our emails. You could always communicate with us. Thank you, Jamie. So another thing that is important, and this is just an example, the tool that has been mandatory for everybody is something similar to the first one that we shared. 
But there's something else that might be beneficial to you. You could do it in Word or whatever interface that is preferable to you. I've had some other people do it like a table in Word because they really don't like Excel and they've had enough with an other Excel tool. I've had some other people prefer this particular kind of tool. So this is an example with people that are doing a cohort, and there are different tabs that talk about when each cohort started and when it would end. Like we see for cohort one, for example, for um, it's called AA or whatever, and it is it started on the 6th of July, which is within the fiscal year to the 18th um, of March 18. It would end in March 18, and then would know that there is a cohort two, which is called BBB. And it starts from the 17th of August all the way through June. There's another cohort that started in October and will go through. So they have all this information all the way to cohort six because they said they were going to do six cohorts for this grant here. Yeah, and also bear in mind that this particular grantee is actually doing an intensive DPP program and using the CDC module. So. This particular data tool that you see is for this particular grantee. I mean, they are really uh, serious about uh, gathering or collecting data, you know, for the DPP program. And they are also submitting that data to us. So this is very intense. It's different from the programs that you all are focused on or your disease focused area. So this is just an example for people that are doing, I know some grantees are doing like a six weeks kind of session thing. Some people are doing like case management where they follow up people and they count the number of times they come in. People are doing different things, but this is just an example of the kind of thing that you can use to capture. Like I said, it can be in Word or whatever kind of document that you're interested in. But if you're capturing something on weight, then it's good to have something like this. If you're doing things around BMI or weight or something, because this helps you to track the, um, your data. And for example, a program that talks about six months, at the end of six months, you want to see how many people have lost this amount of weight. This helps you because you know what when six months is. The intervals of these sessions are two weeks. So you know where the six month mark is, and you know what the weight is then. You know what your start weight is, and you can know what your end weight at that point is, and you can check the difference and see if you lost 2% of the weight for that individual, and you can count that number. So this helps us as well, and it helps you as well, because we can both see the trajectory of your grantees, of your participants, and what they're doing. For example, cohort one, they've gone through, because they started in July, they've gone further, they're going to end in March. And there is no way by which you can enforce. You can give people incentives to keep coming back for longitudinal programs, but there's no way you can really make somebody come every time. People have other life issues to deal with, and we understand that. So when they do not come in, that would be an example of where I'm highlighting right now. They were not in, so you do not have a weight. You do not have anything documented there. When we see the agreement is that when we see a blank spot like this, then we know that, oh, the person that is identified as prior to 47, Oh, the person came on this date, did not come on this date, came here, did not come here, so we do not expect to see anything. But still, you're tracking the weight because the next time the person comes, you get the weight. The weight could go down, could go up, depending on you tell people things, they do different things at times. So that you encourage them, but that's not totally on you. But you encourage them because you also want to have good results. So you keep encouraging them by whatever means that you deem fit. So when it's empty, we know that the person hasn't been in attendance. When we see a yes, we know the person was in attendance for whatever reason did not get a weight check. For example, you're doing a program and you're already like 30 minutes in and you're doing something else, you cannot get the weight or the person says, no, I do not want to do my weight today. There's nothing you can do, but you can encourage them. But if I tell you, no, I do not want to do things, it's like telling the doctor, no, I do not want to do this. No is no. So then you put yes because the person did come to the session, but the person didn't get a weight. But this person that refused to get a weight at this point in the future then gets a weight check. So you're still tracking it at some point. You don't know what it is like one month behind. You don't know if the person lost more weight and gained it, but you don't know all that. As much as possible, you want to get that information. But when you do not, you take what you get and you move on. So you keep going that way till you get to this point where it talks about the post-six-month weight check. And you could document that. And you could subtract this 
take out the first one and see what the difference is, see if it qualifies for the 2% weight loss and things like that. And this makes it clear to you and clear to us as well. If you submit sign-in sheets with this, that is great. If you do not, we have a better understanding of what exactly you're doing. We see this. You submit this alongside your tool every month. Somebody that is doing something regarding weight loss, for example, or some measure that has to improve, then you have to have something like this because this is what helps you to track it. And our assumption would be that even if you're not sending to us, this to us at the time, you already have something in house by which you're doing this. Because if I know I'm going to be held up to the expectation that 2% of people in my program would have lost whatever amount of weight, then I better be tracking this or else when I get to that point, I'll be pulling numbers out of the here. And we do not want to do that. So this is a good way. This is an example of what can be done. If you want us to work with you on this, we can do this. But if you want to do any other simpler method by you that captures this, we're totally all right with that. But then we want this submitted alongside your tool. You could put it in your report. Just anyway, anything that works for you that is simple for you to work with, we'll take it. Once it shows us this, and then when at the end of six months you tell us that five people have lost weight, I can also go back here and see oh, who are the five people. They've really lost five people. And there have been times when I even have seen that there were even more than five, which is to your credit, or that there were less than five, which, well, is the other way around. But whatever it is, it gives everybody a clear picture of what you're doing, and we can together track how these individuals are losing weight. I do not know who client identifier 247 is. I do not need to know that person. But then we know that you're following this person. We know the number of times this person has come. And this also helps us, because in your data to you're counting the new participants that come in, but this tells us that you add maybe 20 new participants, but they came 2,000 times, which is a different story to tell. So are there any questions? Any questions? And this can totally be adapted to the program. This is an example of a template, but depending this is not for one and done sessions. One and done sessions is I go in, I'm done, I'm out. So you're not tracking anything. But for anybody that is doing like a six week program, anybody doing home visiting, anybody doing something in a longitudinal nature, you need to have something of this sort. Is this clear? Because one more thing, we'll just show briefly one or two more things and we'll be done. Is this clear? I would assume no questions if we do not hear anything. There are no charts, there's nothing. Okay, so assumption is that all things are fine. If there's any questions, let us know. Okay, this is the one we used just now. Mm -hmm. I keep going to the same one. Okay. So. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, so, is that you would prefer that um, Excel spreadsheet I uh, submitted every week? I know like, you just recently had an exchange with Allison asking about what it seems like is that is the purpose of that sheet. I'm um, sorry. Sorry, could you repeat that? Yeah, I know you uh, talked to Allison about um, our request about more details about the home visits, which seems like that tool you just showed us would suffice if uh, you're asking for something like that to be submitted. Yeah. And the intensity of that would vary. You know, this is a course right. that is actually a massive program, six courts running concurrently. So it's not going to be the same, but just something like that. And Alison did turn in, and we could talk about this out of mm -hmm. um, this forum. Sure. Alison did turn in something that was really great that could be used. We just have to talk about how to use it without being a burden to you and still getting what is required. So we could talk about that as we is here. Sounds good. But that's just an example. There are simpler versions depending on what you're doing. You know, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll show why that is necessary just in a few minutes. Okay. And I didn't say we said you'll still be here, so we better run things up. I know you want to go places as well. So. Um, so, a question? I have a question. This is Elizabeth. I, I have to leave for another meeting, but 
Um, I'd like to go back to the duplicated count. I think if you can pull it back up to the numbers that you have counted over time. I just need to ask a question quickly, if I may. Okay. Did you go back to the your... First two? The first one? Um, not this, no, not this table. This, this, um, this one. Go, okay, right. Uh, just pull down a little bit, please. Okay. Uh, no, the one you just have. The one you just showed me. And this they have, one? like, no, the one with 41. They were referred... I mean, not refer. They have a and duplicated. Then you have an overtime. You know, you have a count for the desk one, and then you have a count for okay. Drop down one line. Twenty sixteen. Go down a little bit. Okay. Go down a little bit. Uh, go down some more. Uh, where is it at? It's a little dark color, so I couldn't. Not the pink. Okay. Uh, go down a little bit more. One more. Let me see. One more. It's, it has to do with the count. Okay. For the, the particular count. month, and then the count go down a bit more. Okay, I think I know what you're talking about. It talked about if it was duplicated right here. Not this okay. one. Keep going. Up or down? I just yeah. Keep going. I mean, I I just want to clarify. Keep going. It's a little dark. Uh, no. It's a it's where where we reported. All oh, right. Let me see. Okay, right here, numbers sixteen on the screen. Okay. So the monthly actual is twenty eight. Yeah. Right. So your year today is forty one. So mm-hmm. I just want to ask you that you put down a duplicate on your label. On duplicate. On yeah, on right here you have unduplicated. Mm-hmm. So on the year today actuals, in your formulas, are they truly unduplicated? If we just put down the twenty eight to say for instance participant in the state I mean, of course this is somebody else's program. I, I'm not familiar with their program, so I must say that. But if we put down participants, say, in our program and duplicate it for the month of December 28th, we know that these are none of this woman, you know, just, you know, 28. So, but some of this woman come last month, you know, part of this, you know, down November maybe, and a couple of women come, you know, in October. My question is year to date, actual, are these? Who and duplicated numbers? These I don't show your formula. I'm just asking you yeah. whether if I look at the 41, so are these 41 meaning that over time this woman only counted once or this yes. client counted once? Yes? Yes, yes. and I appreciate that. But, but, but let me just say that, though. Let me say that. Okay. Help me to understand. First month I have 10 women. Uh-huh. They're not to They're not to pay. Second one, they come back. I have ten women, but these ten women are not, you know, um, are not uh, uh, duplicated within that month. But they, but two of them may be from the previous month. So are we putting eight down there, or putting ten down there? Elizabeth, we put eight. So that, so I, I just for me, it's just that you know, I, I just want to clarify that, then I can go. I was just okay. keep thinking about this, and so I appreciate that. If you just clear that okay. for me, then I, then I have to leave. Okay. Maybe you can just, yeah. So for this particular program, these are really unduplicated numbers. And you know how we know that and how they know that? Because they use this program actually uses this other tool. Um, so they can count. Oh, where am I? Okay, sorry. Just a minute. I'm trying to pull up something. Okay, and now phase three. So this particular program uses this other tool. So once somebody comes in, they count that person just once. Like this person, the first time the person, the first time identified to four seven will be counted. And the only time that we counted for our spreadsheet will be this day. Every subsequent day we count them from this spreadsheet. They do not go back into that because this is the unduplicated. The first time they show is the first time um, that is when they counted. So these are unduplicated numbers. However. So for that scenario, we can vouch that those are unduplicated numbers. As much as possible, we want to capture unduplicated numbers, but we know that is not always realistic, and that is at times impossible. So for another scenario, like what I'm currently projecting, um, that we talk about uh, number of baby showers and go on to say number in row 16, number of Africans who attend the baby shower. Uh-huh. 
Well, thank you. We want to count unduplicated numbers as much as possible, but at times we know that there will be an overlap. We do not expect that overlap to be very significant, but we know that there will be a few duplicated people. And I think your team has been working to identify those people that come just once. So for you, I'm not sure we're counting unduplicated numbers, but for some so programs, we are counting unduplicated. Just to let you know, for the baby showers, we do unduplicated. You do unduplicated, uh, and there goes the answer. But so I think it's the answer as well, because yeah. ideally we want unduplicated numbers, but we know that in some scenarios it's impossible to count unduplicated because you do not always know. And then there will be an overlap, but that shouldn't be frequent, so that shouldn't be a problem. But I'm glad that Jamie is able to um, state that unduplicated numbers are being counted for this. So. Okay, thank you. So, I'm sorry, I just have to leave. So thank you so much for all the help and then continue then, you know, Jamie is in great position to take more notes for us. I appreciate all the help and have a great Thank you day. so much. Thank you so much. And we'll be in touch and we could yeah, we're always available for you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. So um some other scenarios and what I wanted to bring um <laughs> What I wanted to bring to our notice, and this for a particular program would be another scenario where um, they're making some other counts, like counting a um, number of people in home visits and having a clause of that those numbers need to be actualized by a particular date. So that is another type of performance measure. For some measures, we're marking off um, expectations from monthly actual to year to date actual at the midpoint. Like if you say you're going to do 120 things for a year, midpoint of the year, maybe like November, we expect you to have hit like 60. But for some other programs where the agreement is that by January or by November, I would have accomplished something that we expect you to have made these numbers at that time. So that's just an example of how expectations vary depending on what the performance measures are. And like we have talked about, and I don't know why this is not showing what I think, um, number of home visits conducted, like some people would do, for a woman, they would want to do maybe in-person home visits, one a month, for example, and then a phone call one a month for, uh, once a month for each woman enrolled for, uh, as an example. So for those, the kind of sheet I showed you that tracked weight would have been great as well, because something that will capture that, okay, woman A was recruited like in January, and in January I had one home visit, and some people would need more than one, but if you would say that I had like two home visits and one phone call or something like that, and then we can track for each month to the end of the um, fiscal year. Just something simple, it could be in Word, and then those totals will go into the monthly actual and will gradually become additive till we get the final numbers. Okay, and that is another example. Just bringing up like different scenarios for different organizations. So that is another example. And any simple tool that would help us to understand what exactly is going on. Because for example, if I say I have recruited six women, but for this month I had four home visits. So it's likely that maybe two women did not get or even three women did not get because one woman got two. So I need something that we, we need something that would like show us like an idea of what exactly transpired in the course of the year. It could just be in a table, but something simple that comes with this your submission every month would right, would resolve that. Okay. Are there any questions? I do not want to keep us any further. <laughs> Are there any questions? I'm um, sorry, I have one okay. question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so that column that you just showed, so, and you see why you're saying about the other tool, because that column, that row is actually, even though it says number of home visits per woman, it's actually like number of home visits. So that's where that uncertainty is coming for like each woman seeing they're actually getting that like one home visit a month. So each woman getting home visits. So, so if there are like nine women in the program, then at the least every month, we want to see nine. We know at times it's not possible, but then we have to understand why. If we had had something that was tracking and showing that the ninth woman did not get it, maybe there's an X there and, or there's a check mark or something, that we, when we go back to that data too and we see numbers, we understand why there is four home visits, mm -hmm. but there were nine women. Is that okay. clear? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just so, so it's something really simple. If you want it in Excel, we'll do it in Excel. But I think this kind of tool, this Excel that we expect you to submit with your narrative every month, is the most important. That is an attachment that would help us to understand the numbers that we see in the tool, especially for longitudinal programs. Thank you. Okay, and from that last tool as well, I've shown examples of one and done things. And um, so this will be similar to what we had talked about before. I'm just talking about another program and how things are counted. Like for this program, I'm just going to run through this real quick. So for this program in July, um, the way their program is written is that they will be doing diabetes self-management follow-up programs. <laughs> okay, just give me a minute, and I'll just respond to something. Yeah. No, Miss Uma, uh, we're not saying another tool. We're saying for people that do one and done sessions for this fiscal year, we do not need anything to track anything because you're doing one and done anyway. They either come, which is like the upper part of the last one where I shared where there were baby showers and people will come in, you count the number of baby showers you've had, you count the number of people in attendance and that is it. And maybe you do the pre-post test and you do like the average of that, which is something else I should mention. And then the pre-post test and things like that. That is another kettle of fish. But for people that do longitudinal, now, then something else might be needed to explain how those numbers fill into this. Just something like a summary page. And my understanding is that you already, everybody already has that. Because for you to pull those numbers to enter into this sheet, then you already have that information. It's just for you to establish and make it clear. So that anybody that sees it has an understanding. I see four home visits here. And then I go into that addendum. And then I see that, oh, yeah, you have nine women, but you had an X as in for five of them. They didn't have any visit, but you have the check mark for four of them. So yeah, that's why I have four home visits. I don't have to ask you, but why do you have nine women and why do you have four home visits? I don't have to do that questioning because I go in there and I see that. And for the organization that does this table and the other spreadsheet, it's clear what they do. We see it every month. We check those numbers, they add up, and we have no problems whatsoever. So something simple, it doesn't have to be that advanced. Something simple that captures that kind of information would always be great. So, no, not everybody, let us be clear, no, not everybody needs another tool. And no, not everybody needs to get another Excel tool from us. If you prefer another interface for this, this is where you can show and take your preference and use whatever interface you prefer for that. So, this is another example, and you would see that this uh, particular grantee is doing diabetes self-management follow-up sessions at 30, 60, and 90 day intervals. And you would see if they had a 90 day interval, they would enter the numbers. If they had a 30, they would enter. If they had a 90, a 60, they would enter. And that would fill into this. At times, they might have one and two, and it would add up into that, or whatsoever, or whatsoever that might be. And it goes on, same example, just like the previous one that we shared. And it talks about the number of participants reached, and then they have nine divided as two here and seven somewhere else. And it goes on and on, just similar to the first two that we shared. And then they come to a performance measure that talks about the number of participants in group follow-up session who scored 70% or greater on that. And that performance measure is written such that it's counting numbers in terms of, oh yeah, I had 20 people in attendance, but out of these 20 people, or all of them, showed they scored 70% or greater on the post test. Then I entered those numbers as um, I entered them into those different ratio categories, and then it adds up in here. And then if you would go all the way, we leave a section where you can put like the average pre-test, which is something else that for people that are doing tests, not everybody is doing a pre-post test, but for people that are doing tests, we need an average pre-test and an average post-test. So you pull the pre-test for everybody that has completed. You put the post-test. You don't need to do the matching, which is what we talked about during the first meeting. You don't have to match Mr. A to Mr. B A. It could be A to Z, and A to Z, you add the pretest, you do the average, you add the process, you do the average. And if you administer the same two, we're not trying to know if in this class they scored higher than in that class. If you administer the same two, you give the same education. In three classes in a month, you can totally do all those summaries together. Or you could do, if you did like three of them, you could do summaries, average one, average two, average three. 
we don't expect that you'd have more than three tests administered in that month that would be different from each other. So that is where that section comes in. And every other thing is as we have talked about before. So, any other questions? I think every other thing is like we have discussed before. So, yeah. But the important thing is to understand all the different sections that we've talked about, to understand that the last column, which is T for some people, but might be another column for some other people, depending on how many columns they have. Like for this individual, it's column AB. So it depends on what you have going in there. So AB here, T in some places, it varies from, place, from, um, from program to program. But wherever the last column is, that's where it talks about referrals. We have established today that in section B, it is also always a people count. In section C, it's a number of referral counts. And yeah, and every other thing we have talked about. So if there are any questions, and I know it's almost three, so I'm sure you're tired, I'm sure. I hope this has been helpful. And um, if you have any questions. Any questions? No questions? Okay. Okay, so no questions. Thank you very much and we are always, you know, our emails, our phone numbers, you could always reach out to us. And like I said, I'll write up a summary based on the change in the definition of the of columns that we highlighted in section B and C, just as a summary, and sent to everyone. And this will also be posted on the um, website. I don't know when they will send the recording to us, but it will be posted on the website. So if anybody would like to view it in the future, just to see what we have talked about, just to have a, like a refresher or anybody that wasn't able to make the full time or not able to attend, it will be available right there. So in the absence of any questions, I would like to say thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules um, to be here and uh, thank you and do have a great evening. Thank you. Hello? So we're done. Thank you so much for coming.